part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. His grace is free and undeserved. His grace is unmerited. His grace is without your contributions. At this point, somebody said, well, what do you do then? If you're spending all this time with God, the only thing left for you to do is just flow with him, do what he tells you to do. Don't go out and try to fix you, what we do. We've been trying to do something, trying to make him do something instead of working with him. The Mentality Men's Conference is back. On September 8th through 9th, we are breaking free from the world's definition of manhood and embracing the men God created us to be. Join men from all over the world for the 2023 Mentality Men's Conference. You don't want to miss this free conference. Text MENTALITY to 51555, scan the QR code on your screen, or visit creflodollarministries.org and register now. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, you love is here to stay. Oh, it's time we live a new life. Oh, let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. God's love was expressed through His grace. So grace is God's love in action. Grace is God's love in action. Think about some of the stuff that God has done for you since you've been born again. Grace is His love in action. Think about when you were on the brink of life and, and just couldn't figure it out and you done tried your best and you didn't know and you, you, you thought that God didn't love you and, and, you, and, and you walked in condemnation and you, and you walked in shame and, 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 and you were so condemned and so beat up and, and, and you, you were trying to live right and you were, you were trying to do the Word and you, you were trying to come to church and be a good church member, trying to be a good choir member, trying to be a good usher member. You were trying. And somewhere in there in your life, Satan convinced you that you ain't all right with God no more. Satan convinced you that, no, 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 you ain't going to heaven no more. Satan convinced you, no, 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 no. God can't bless you no more. I mean, listen, I was in the ministry and questioned, and am I going to make it? Am I going to make it, Lord? Because some people think, well, you know, preachers going to automatically make you, no. I know some preachers who ain't even saved. the grace of God. God expressed his love through his grace, and he saved them. He saved those guys. And I get so excited anytime I hear of any preacher who's a New Testament preacher who decided to preach Jesus Christ and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, because that's the gospel. That's the gospel. Okay, let's go to the second piece, the second slice of this definition of grace. The first slice, of course, was grace is the operation of God's love. Here's the second slice. This is important. God's love is infinite. God's love is infinite. Look at St. John, uh, 1 John, I think, 1 John 4, 16 in the uh, NLT if you have that Bible. God's love is infinite. Now, why is that so important? Well, look at this. He says, we know how much God loves us. I, I pause because I don't think a lot of people know how much God loves them. We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in His love. See, we spent so much time, religion, religion had us spending so much time on the issue of how much you love God. And the issue is not how much you love God. The issue is how, how much do you believe that God loves you? 
See, that's where the devil was attacking people. They were getting people convinced that you have done something and now God don't love you no more. No, 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 no. The issue is, will you believe the love that God has for you? That's where the power is. Do you believe that God loves you? I believe God loves me, therefore I believe what God says in his word. I believe God loves me, therefore I believe he'll heal me. I believe God loves me, therefore I believe he will prosper me. You won't go around talking about, well, maybe God doing this to punish me and to show me something. I believe God loves me, therefore I believe I'm not going to die of this cancer because God loves me, praise God. I believe God's loved me, and so if you get co got, got corona sometime in that whole process, I believe God loves me, therefore I'm coming out of this, praise God. I believe God loves me, therefore somehow I'm going to pay these bills. I don't know where it's going to come from, but I do know God loves me. I believe God loves me, you in jail, and somehow or another I'm going to get up out of this and get, get vindicated. I believe God loves me, and when you believe the love that God has for you, you'll believe the power. We know how much God loves us, and we, 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 we have put our trust in his love. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. Something missing when our Christianity is all about how much more money we can get, how successful we can be. No, 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 no. Your Christianity should be clearly defined by the love that we have for one another. Yeah, you don't ever get no shouts on that one, do you? <laughs> how much love we have for one another. God's looking to see how we treat one another. He died for his enemies. You don't even speak to yours. You ain't even thought about doing nothing. Well, I ain't got no enemies. Yes, you do. You sitting here minding your business at church. Somebody talking about you. You just don't know they're talking about you. But we walk in love. It doesn't matter. We, we walk on a higher level. We, God is love and his love is so powerful, it must infect us. I pray that you all will be infected by love and that we'll have a pandemic of the love of God, that you catch love. Glory be to God, that you catch love, praise God. I've learned in my life that in order for me to do that, I got to let stuff go. I can't. People who keep stuff, all that's going to do is infect you with the wrong kind of stuff. And then you're going to end up by yourself. Because ain't nobody got time for that. I love you, but I'm not going to love you in, in, a, in, a, in a situation where, you know, instead of you forgiving me, you for sale your forgiveness. I'll forgive you if you do these three things. That ain't no forgiveness, that's for sale. You said, if I, for, if I for sale these three things, then you'll forgive me. That's not what love is. Love is patient. It's kind. It's long-suffering. It's all the things that church people don't appear to be these days. days. So as God is infinite, so are his attributes. So is his characteristics. God is infinite, his love then is infinite. Therefore, that love which he is must be infinite. This love is infinite. And again, God's love is infinite because the measure of it, his only begotten son is infinite. There is no dead end for God's love. Uh-uh. I don't care how crazy you get or do, there is no crazy that can be produced from a man that will ever block up, stop up God's love. The grace of God flowing from infinite love is inexhaustible, can't be stopped. It can never fail. And this is the grace that he has 
begin to sick upon your life who believe in him. I am now going to deal with you with love that, that's inexhaustible. I'm going to deal with you with love that cannot fail. My love cannot fail. Now, here's the problem. As Christian people, we've not known how to receive that love by faith. And I just showed you. Lord, I believe you love me. I believe you love me, Lord, so you're not going to let me be a complainer all my life. I believe you love me, Lord. So you're going to show me how to, how to live my life away from my past. I think I prayed this this morning. I can't alter my past, but I can bring my past to the altar. And his love never fails. That's the grace of God. I believe the love. Say it. Say, I believe the love. Say it again. I believe the love. Say it again. I believe the love. That's how you receive that. Amen. You have to remind yourself over and over again, I believe God loves me. I know God loves me. In, in the midst of crazy time, I do not know. The lights just went out, and you don't know. You have nothing to pay those bills. God loves me. That's why there's going to be a way. He's going to make a way for me to be able to get out of this. God loves me. That's why I'm going to operate in promotion. God loves me. That's why I'm going to be the best husband, the best wife, the best ch children. God loves me. And, and it's, 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 it can't fail. So I can't do nothing and won't do nothing without reminding myself he loves me, especially when I get concerned and, and when I get hurt. I have, to, I have to remind myself, God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. I mean, my, my wife will tell you, uh, for about a week or two, I wasn't sleeping too good. And I, I just got in the Word because God loves me. God, God loves me. I don't need to be going around talking about all of the scientific reasons for why I ain't sleeping. <laughs> that ain't helping me. I'm sleeping. <laughs> and I got in the Word and I looked up every scripture I could find on sleep. And the one that did it for me was when my head hits the pillow, I lie down in peace and my sleep shall be sweet. Man, when I got that first eight hours that came up, I wanted to take a picture and put it on Instagram or whatever. Tap him, send this out, let everybody see. Just show them the time I got up this morning. And you know what I did? I just started praising God for his love. You love me. This can't go on. You love me. And because you love me, we're going we to figure whatever. We gonna, you, gonna, you love me. Those of you looking for a job, God loves you. And God wants you to have the best job. He wants you to have a job where you can state your own salary. He wants you to have a job where you, you can state your own salary, state your own situation. They're going to come up to you and tell you, 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 you want to work home or you want an office? I want to stay, stay home. Uh, you, you, what, what else you want? You, you, you need a car to get around in? Uh, what else you want? We know somebody that they did it. They, they, they got everything they wanted. They got a bigger salary, and, 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 and they, they ask them, what else can we do for you? What else can we do for you? That's the inexhaustible love of God. That's the grace of God. It wasn't because you were so outstanding. It's because he's so outstanding. All right, number three. So we know grace is the operation of God's love. It is infinite. It never can fail. Here we go. Number three, it's unmerited. Now, this is the part that's gotten us, I believe, in, in, in church. It's unmerited. It's undeserved. It's unearned. You're not, you, can't, you can't qualify for this. Let's see. Man can do nothing or contribute nothing to that which God does in grace. And nor do we do anything to merit it or deserve it. You can't contribute nothing. We think we can because religions taught us, do these three things and that'll happen. Do this and that'll happen. Do this. And none of it's coming out of your heart. It's coming out of an attempt to try to get God to do something for you. <laughs> Look at Romans 11:6 6 in the NLT, Romans 4 and 4 in the NLT. 
in Luke chapter 18, and I'll give you the verse in a minute in, in NLT. Man can do nothing or contribute nothing to that which God does in grace. So everything that God does for us, he does it in grace. And you still think you're contributing something. Somehow you're trying to brag on something that God did. Oh, the reason why that happened, because see, what you don't know is I went on a five-day fast, didn't even have no water. <laughs> There's, you can't contribute anything to which God has decided to do by grace. He's already, whatever issue you're facing, he's already decided for the best outcome for you. And you, you think you can make God do it. And then we got to the point where we think we can be like God without God, and that's called religion. Look at this in verse 6. And since it is through God's kindness, then it is not by their good works. For in that case, God's grace would not be what it really is, free and undeserved. His grace is free and undeserved. His grace is unmerited. His grace is without your contributions. At this point, somebody said, well, what do you do then? If you're spending all this time with God, the only thing left for you to do is just flow with him, do what he tells you to do. Don't go out and try to fix you, what we do. We've been trying to do something, trying to make him do something instead of working with him. You have plenty to do. God, God will tell you to do this. He'll tell you to do that. He'll, just, just flow with God. Just do what God tells you to do. Just walk in in this wonderful obedience towards the Holy Spirit as he leads and guides you along the way. What gets you is this. You can't figure out how to do something where you can boast about it. You know, church folk love to boast about what they did. You can't do it. The Bible says we're saved by grace. We get it through faith. Lest any man should boast. You know what he did? He said the grace gave you salvation. You ain't got nothing to boast about because you didn't have nothing to do with it. You didn't deserve it. You didn't earn it. He said this grace is free and clear. If it was by works, then grace would not be what it is, free and undeserved. Well, I deserve it because, and this is what gets me, and I, I can't wait to get to this part of the sermon, I'm a tither. What the know what that mean? <laughs> like that gives you some type of, uh, oh, give me the word, some kind of entitlement. Look at that, entitlement and came into church. You think you're entitled to be blessed because you are a tither? Well, you know, pastor, this was a good person, and they was a tither too. Well, they don't qualify you for nothing. <laughs> you, can, you can tell I've been holding that a while, huh? <laughs> I'm a tither, so therefore I should be able to have these privileges. I'm a tither. That, 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 that's not entitlement. You know, that's what's wrong with our world right now. So entitled. Now watch this. Look at Romans 4 and 4 in the NLT. When people work, their wages are not a gift, but it's something that they have earned. Grace is a gift. To work for it turns that gift into a payment for something earned. So anytime you think you can do something to earn it, you've turned what God released as a gift and turned it into a wage, something that was earned. Now, look at Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. I'm going to look at this, and then we'll stop right here. Luke 8, Luke, Luke 8 verse 9. We're going to read 9 through 14. Then Jesus told his story to some who had great confidence in their own righteousness 
and scorned everyone else. Two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a despised tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed this prayer. I thank you, God, that I am not like other people. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a cheater. I'm not, I'm not like other people, cheaters, sinners, adulterers. I'm certainly not like that tax collector. Seriously, that was a prayer? I fast twice a week, and I give you a tenth, there it goes, of my income. But the tax collector stood at a distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed instead he beat his chest in sorrow, saying, Oh God, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. Next verse. I tell you, this sinner, not the Pharisee, returned home justified before God. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. See what that Pharisee was doing with self righteousness. Self-righteous people always like to compare themselves with somebody else. Self-righteous people always say, well, at least I ain't do that. That's self-righteous. I don't do this, I don't do that. That's self-righteous. Your self-righteousness is enough, it's sin. But somehow, Satan convinces you that you're doing that, and that's going to earn you God's grace. It's, it doesn't work like that. That's not how that happens. That's, how not, that, that's not how that works. Therefore, works as a means of obtaining God's favor and grace are completely excluded. Listen to this. God's grace always acts first on behalf of man before man can act on behalf of God. Hear this. God's grace always acts first on behalf of, of, of man. So God's doing something first for you enabling you now to act on behalf of God. There's an excellent scripture to, uh, to, uh, to, to show you. First, first uh, John chapter 4, verse 19 in the King James, first John 4, 19. See, man can't ever act on behalf of God unless God has first of all acted on man's behalf. We love him because he first loved us. <laughs> we can't love him first. He got to love me first. It's his love for me that enables me to love him. We love him, but he acted on our behalf. First of all, we didn't act on his behalf. But grace is more than just unmerited favor. It is favor towards those who deserve the very opposite. Grace is favor on those who deserve the opposite. The thing you're supposed to get, you don't get, and grace operates for those who deserve the opposite. Look at Romans 5 and 8 and Romans 5 and 10 in the NLT. Romans 5 and 8 and 5 and 10 in the NLT. That's something. Grace operates on, on, on behalf of somebody who deserves the opposite of grace. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us when? While we were still sinners. Christ died for us. Verse 10, for since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, he restored us. We were all enemies of God. Please understand that. He says we will certainly be saved through the life of God. So by the grace of God, Jesus died for sinners. Jesus died for his enemies. Sin, therefore, does not, in fact, cannot limit the grace of God. Sin cannot limit the grace of God. Now, that don't mean you go and just sin to test it. And it won't happen because grace is teaching you not to sin. Are you searching for a deeper understanding of God's grace? In the series, A Deeper Definition of Grace, Creflo Dollar gives a solid understanding of our covenant and a true picture of our God. 
Grace is the truth. Anytime you hear grace, it's Jesus. Jesus is the source of grace. The very same grace that brings salvation also teaches those who are saved how to live pleasing unto God. Growth in your spiritual life can only come by grace. He will work out his plan for your life. And you know what? He's working out that plan right now. All three messages in this series can be yours today for a love gift of 20 U.S. dollars. DVDs are available for a love gift of 30 U.S. dollars. Be sure to visit CreflodollarMinistries.org and click eStore, scan the QR code, or call the number on your screen to get yours now. Grace Life Homecoming is a few days away, and it is live and in person only at the World Dome in College Park, Georgia, July 13th to 15th. Time is running out, so register for your free seat today. Joining Creflo and Taffy Dollar are Clarence McClendon, Gregory Dickow, Michael Smith, and Mimi Haddad, plus musical guests Ty Trivet, William Murphy, J.J. Hairston, and more. The whole family is invited. Bring your kids, teens, and friends with you. You. Outside of grace, there's no life. That's why you come to Grace Life. It's transformative. It renews the way you think. In two hours, I got more answers than I have of years of crying and begging and praying out to God. Text Grace Life to 51555. Scan the QR code, visit worldchangers.org, or call 1 866 477 7683. Don't miss this summer of grace. I think you would be amazed at what Creflo Dollar Ministry does every day around the world. Testimonies come in from all over about the impact we have. And I wish you could see the kids we feed. Their lives are changed and impacted for the better because of you, our givers. The seeds you sow into this ministry make a mark that, uh, that can never be erased. And I wanna thank you so much for your financial contributions into the kingdom of God and into this ministry. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org. God bless you. No matter where you are on your personal journey, the Word of God can reach you. At work or simply needing to hear from the Lord, Tune in to World Changers every Sunday at 10 a.m. or restream at 2 p.m., 6 p.m., and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Text Watch Now to 51555 or visit worldchangers.org for more information about services and stream times. We're in this together. No matter where we are, we are World Changers. See you online. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.